<laughs> What's happening, Boo Chunkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup. I didn't say for voiceover this time because this is not really for voiceover, but what I wanted to show you is how I do my coaching setup. I was talking with somebody the other day and and we were we were talking about remote coaching, and I wanted to show you how I have my remote coaching setup set up, if if you will. I do a lot of coaching to help new voice actors get their, get their booth set up to listen to their sound, to do a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. And so I've tried to optimize in my, my very small workspace, I've tried to optimize a desk that works really well for me. I'm not saying this is how you should set up your desk. I'm showing you how it works for me. So if you need in, any inspiration, if, if this can be at all inspirational to help you see if this could be better for your Zoom meetings, for your Zoom trainings, for however you're meeting with clients online. I want to show you how I have mine set up. It's going to seem complicated. It took a little while for me to get to this point, but once I got it, this, this setup really works well for me. And I, I just want to run you through all the different parts. If there's links to anything, I'll put them in the description for you. And then if you have any questions, come on over to the Booth Junkie Discord. I hang out there and uh, we can talk about any questions that you might have about this particular, about this particular setup. So let's go through it. It really starts from the control room side of my studio. So back there is my booth. Over here, this is my control room side. And the heart of the control room side is my desk. My desk was given to me by a company called FlexiSpot. And they're actually sponsoring a little portion of this video. So I'm going to talk about the FlexiSpot desk. Now, they don't actually have any input on what I talk about with respect to the desk. They would like me to share it with you. And I've had this desk now for about six months. I did a review back in the spring about this. And I, I put it here and I figured I'd give it a try. And it has really become a fairly essential part of my workflow. So I'd like to walk you through right up front, sort of the heart of my desk, and you'll see how it integrates with, with, the way I, with the way I coach. So the desk itself, I'm gonna switch over to this camera here. The desk itself is, your, is, a, is a studio or a, what you might call a, a production desk or a mixing desk that normally has three, three racks for studio equipment. You see that I only have a couple of pieces of equipment mounted. I have a lot, a lot of capability with these two pieces of equipment, uh, but that's my power strip, and that's called an Audient ASP880. Each one of these three rack units uh, is a two, two U unit, so you can put up to six pieces of equipment in there. You notice I just have two pieces of equipment mounted. I have a video switcher, and under there I have another computer that's hidden under there. We'll talk about that in a minute. The first shelf of the desk, if you're a music producer, this might hold a keyboard, you know, and actually like a, like a MIDI keyboard or something like that. I actually use this first tier for my regular typing keyboard. I keep my interface here for, that's sort of the heart of my voiceover studio, that, that interface. And then I have over here, this is my stream deck that allows me to control what happens on not only the screens in here, but the screens that are in my booth. This, this controller allows me to control all of that. I also have attached with a heavy duty arm. I have uh, a heavy duty arm that allows me to mount the Mac on a, on a heavy duty arm. If anybody knows anything about these older iMac, uh, iMacs, you know they are very heavy. So this holds that iMac just fine. I have a second screen. That's the screen I share with my clients. And then I have a prompter screen over here. That's the actual camera that you're seeing me on, and it's got a prompter, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. Now, when I'm coaching for voiceover, I will frequently coach from a sitting position, so we'll, we'll talk like this. But sometimes when we're talking about things like microphone technique, I'll want to stand while we do that coaching because the way you, the way you operate in front of a microphone can sometimes be different when you're standing versus when you're sitting. And so that's where another nice feature unexpectedly nice feature about the flexi spot desk comes on. This is an uh, electric sit-stand desk. So if I can just switch from my sitting position to my standing position, so I just press that, and the desk will rise so that I can switch over to a standing position, and I can still raise the mic, 
but I still have access to my keyboard. I have access to my stream deck. I have access to the ID44, my interface. I have access to all of my equipment, but now I'm standing up in front of the microphone. So if I'm doing anything with respect to mic technique, we're talking about acting or performing in front of the microphone, then I have the ability to do that. Now, I'm a little bit height challenged, space challenged in my booth, so are in my control room. It operates out at the basement of my house. So I have these, these narrow strip lights that go all the way across. So that's how you're seeing me be illuminated with these strip lights. Those are from Generay. I have a link in the description to them. And then some side lights and some hair lights. So I've got sort of my whole lighting rig. And this works generally whether I'm sitting or standing. Uh, so I can raise, but I can raise or lower the desk with just the touch of a button. And it will automatically go between my two primary positions. And that is sitting or standing. So if you've seen any of my recent videos where I've been sitting, now you can see the desk, <laughs> the desk where I sit. So what equipment do I keep in the desk? So the, this interface here, this is the heart and soul of my voiceover studio. This is my Audient ID44, but I also can run all of my coaching through it uh, because it's got a space for multiple microphones. And then I also have a second piece of equipment here also from Audient. This is called the ASP880. So I purchased both of these pieces of equipment and these allow me to hook up to a dozen microphones here. So if I'm doing a microphone shootout, if I'm trying to compare microphones uh, for a client's benefit, we can plug in a bunch of different microphones. We have access to all sorts of stuff here. And these are also attached to my booth. I can route the signal back to my booth by turning on and off some of these microphones. And there's a switcher. There's a switcher in the other room so I can switch back and forth. But generally speaking, I just use whatever mic I'm currently working with. And that's the microphone that the client hears me with. And so in this case, this is just the, uh, the Telefunken TF11 microphone I bought a few months ago that I'm testing out. Hopefully I'll get to make a review about it. But this is what the client this is what the client hears. I switch between all of the different views so I can switch between the view here at the booth, uh, here at the control room. I can switch between the view in my booth through my stream deck. So I can switch back and forth between all of the different views that I have the capability for. So I can, I can have a second computer. For example, I have a second computer mounted or just resting in the desk. That's a silent uh, silent Windows PC that's that I can switch. I can use that as a teleprompter screen. I can use that if we're if we're talking about Windows. I can put that screen up on the up on the window, uh, up in my confidence monitor here. If I'm sharing with the client, if we're going over the DAW, if we're coaching on anything specific to the DAW, I can do that here on my second screen. So this is just a small monitor that I use as a second screen. So this is the one I know I can safely share and not worry about uh, any confidential information that might go out. That's my screen for sharing. But that is the third monitor for the Mac. So this monitor is the primary monitor for the Mac. That's the secondary. And that's the third monitor. So all three of these are monitors that are attached to the Mac. So my confidence monitor there. This allows me to do the high fidelity sharing on Zoom, so I can just do a screen share there, but then I can also switch between any of the other views just by switching through. So if I wanna switch the, it's off, but if I wanted to switch the, to the camera that's in the booth, I would just switch over to the booth camera and it would appear there and that would be what's going out on the screen or out on the stream. So in this case, I'm just putting my camera up there and that's what I see there. So I have control over what goes out over to, uh, I can control what's going out over the Zoom feed, what the Stream Deck, and I can see exactly what's going out over that uh, over that view, even down to the multi view of what's connected to the what's actually connected to the the ATEM Mini at any given time. So we'll set, switch that back. So the ATEM Mini that this is a video switcher that allows me to hook up to eight different resources that whatever I might be coaching on. So it could be second computers. Sometimes I'll have a second Mac here. Um, I've coached with a Raspberry Pi that's attached here. I can connect anything, multiple cameras. I can connect anything and have it all routed out. Because it's also got a recording feature, 
I can record the coaching session. I can record my side of it and send that down, or we can record on Zoom and I can record uh, the screen share and everything. So I can record all of that and create a record recorded coaching session for, uh, for, the, for the client. Also very helpful and often the clients are quite grateful for the ability to get a copy of it. The, the way I have my monitor set up, like I said before, th this is a separate screen. So I've, I've lightly modified an existing teleprompter that I had. This teleprompter here, this is the um, YC Onion. I think it's called, I think the model is called the Lasagna model. The Lasagna model of all things. They name a lot of their products after food. So this is the Lasagna model, which I watched a, a several, couple of different YouTube videos about it. But the thing I like about it is it's, it's capable and compatible with wide angle lenses. So this is a wide angle lens. And so you don't get any vignetting from the hood that's, that's around it. Uh, so it, it works well for, <laughs> for wide angle. But notice here, this is not a phone. This is not an iPad. This is actually a second seven inch monitor. So that's the uh, Andy Cine C7 Lite monitor that attaches just with a you know, quarter inch 20 adapter that connects to the, uh, to the teleprompter itself. And that's actually the teleprompter is how we have this mounted to the desk. So you see, I've just sort of cobbled together a little clamp with a ball head that's got a quick release plate and it holds up the monitor. And then the camera attaches directly to the back of the teleprompter. And so this camera just lives here. This camera, if you're curious, curious, that's the, uh, the Sony A6400, the YC Onion Lasagna, the Andy Cine C7 Lite monitor. Now the monitor itself doesn't do the, the right flip and rotate to make it so that I can see myself and read scripts or read prompting out of that screen. So the monitor is actually driven by this thing here, which is probably overkill for this purpose, but this is called a decimator. And it can do all sorts of manipulations to video, but the thing I use it for is I use it to rotate the high def signal that comes over into the teleprompter. So a decimator, a couple of hundred bucks for this piece of equipment, but it does exactly what I need it to do. Well, I'm back here, a couple of flaws that I, uh, that this desk has, the thing, and I've sent feedback back to FlexiSpot that hopefully they'll make adjustments in future versions of the desk. As you notice, I've got a piece of wood clamped here, and that is just so that I could clamp a microphone to the desk. It's got this flat, uh, the, two, the two surfaces on the back, both protrude the same amount. So the clamp from the, for the microphone stand, it would hit the bottom. So I have it, uh, I have it just attached on a little piece of wood that sticks out. You may be able to find other mic stands that have a lower profile for attaching the mic stand. You see like the clamp for my monitor fits, but the one for the microphone didn't. So I just clamped on a piece of wood. It was a quick and dirty solution that ended up working really well, ended up working really well for, uh, for that particular situation. So that's how I, that's how I have the mic. That's how I have the Mac. So the Mac is just on a, just on an arm back there. And that works out, that works out really well. That works out really well. Now, when I'm, when I'm doing coaching, I often, often wanna control what, the, what sound the client hears. We do a lot with sound in this, in this coaching, so we often wanna manipulate what sound is going back to the client. So on the Mac itself, I, I run a piece of software called Loopback from a company called Rogue Amoeba. And what Loopback allows me to do is it allows me to create a virtual a uh, virtual sound device. So normally when you just plug your, uh, your USB microphone or your interface into it, into the computer, it gets recognized as a device. Well, Loopback allows me to combine multiple items, applications, hardware, all together. So to the computer, it all appears as one device. So sometimes when I'm coaching, I'll be working with a different piece of equipment here. Perhaps they've got a a piece of focus right equipment and I have audience and we want to talk about the knobs and buttons. I can actually hook that device up and in loopback, I can create a device that actually combines the audience devices and the, and the focus right devices, all different devices. I can control 
what gets sent back to the client with loopback. And it allows me to control which applications might get sent back. So I can actually pick and choose if an application sends audio back down the line to the customer. So it might be that I'm listening to something during a coaching session that I don't want to send that audio back, or we are listening to something together and we do want to send it back, like my DAW session or anything like that. Loopback allows me to put all those things together. And then I also usually keep it kind of overexposed here, but I also uh, keep my control panel for my actual booking sessions. So the way people book with me is they book with me online through my website, and I use a, a piece of software called Zoho One, and a component of Zoho One allows me to create bookings, allow, allow it to manage my schedule, does the billing uh, for whatever time people reserve. The Zoho One application, suite of applications, which includes bookings, allows me to also book, allows customers to book time with me, and that shows up here on the screen so I can see what they're asking to do. If they've shared any files with me, I can take care of all of that in Zoho Bookings. The computer that I have over here, this is just a silent Windows PC that I think I bought from Newegg. Low power, but uh, it works really well for if I, I don't do a lot with Windows, but in case we need to look at uh, some piece of software on Windows, I've got a separate Windows computer and that just shows up as a second screen or as another input. So I can send that input back back down the Zoom stream, back, uh, back to the customer, or sometimes I'll use that as a prompter. So if I need to put a script up there, I can route that screen to this ATEM, choose the ATEM output to come over to this screen. So this screen is attached to the ATEM Mini, and uh, I can just pick and choose from here what goes out. So I think that counts as the comments screen. That's what I've called that because I used to put um, YouTube comments up there for live streams. So that's my comments camera or my comments input. And when I put the, when I choose that, we would actually see that computer. You can see that computer booting up right now and it's showing up on the screen and I can send that screen from that PC down, or I can just come back here and say, let's go back to the control room camera. So now I've switched it back to looking at myself. This is the feed from my camera, or I can come back and choose the boot up. Are we focusing on that there? So we can see the boot up screen of the PC, or I can choose the screen, the screen, uh, this is the screen of the computer. So the third monitor of the Mac is showing up here and we're seeing just a return from something like a Zoom session. I'm logged into Zoom just so we can demonstrate how that works. But you see, I can control anything here and I can control what is being sent back down to the back down to the client, but I can make eye contact with them and they can make eye contact with me by going through this prompter monitor. Been hugely, hugely helpful. And then finally, if I want to leave this desk and come over to my desk in my booth. So you see this booth, this desk is also showing the same output that is on the teleprompter. So back behind the desk, and you'll forgive all the wires that's back there, but back there you'll see this little device with blue tape on it. That, that device, that's an HDMI splitter. So the, the output from the ATEM Mini goes to the HDMI splitter. That splitter sends a signal to this monitor and to this monitor. So this can be, so this can be showing any one of those eight inputs. So I can put scripts here, I can put whatever, but that, and that is typically just running as the third output. So in this case, the zoom window from the screen, the screen from my computer, it just comes over here and we can see Let's see, we can see that this is really just, this is just the third screen. So this is just a zoom window. So that's, that's what's there. And I could switch, you see, I've got another camera up here, another A6400. So if I turn this camera on, I think it's unplugged at the moment, but this, can, this camera can also be routed to go out <laughs> over the A10 Mini. So what that allows me to do is it allows me to really route any part of my studio 
back down to the client. I can route a screen back down to the client. I can route any audio I want back down to the client. I can record those sessions and it doesn't, because I'm using loopback, it doesn't interfere with all my regular voice work because all my regular voice work comes through this monitor at the same time. And it's all because of the room I have and the way that this flexi spot desk gives me the flexibility and capability to do all of this without having to reconfigure every time. It's been amazing. It's been amazing, super helpful. I really don't know how I would have done this with just a flat desk. I don't know how a flat desk would have done all of this for me. You know, I have another flexi spot desk over here that I use for my overheads. I use it as a workbench. I use it for uh, if we need to do anything separate, I can set up a second camera. If we're, we're trying to demonstrate anything on a, on a session over here, you see I'm working with a piece of equipment now. I can do all of that from a flat desk, but you see that doesn't have nearly the space or capability as the studio desk. It's just been, it's been, it's been incredible. It's been really, uh, really instrumental and important to making my coaching sessions work. Not sure what else there is to show you. I think the only thing, maybe there's one other thing to show you. If I look down there, you can see that some of the, the one of the devices is plugged into this, uh, this item with the blue tape on it here. So I use uh, this, these smart plugs from Monoprice called Monoprice Stitch. And so from my phone, I can turn all the, all the different lights. I can turn all the equipment on. So if I come over to the Stitch application, I can just say, let's turn on everything on the desk. I can turn my, all my studio lights on. I can, I can power up the whole studio. I can power down the studio. Will that focus? There we go. So from the Stitch app, I can just... And this works with Google Assistant and stuff too, but I can just turn all my studio lights on, turn my studio lights off. I can turn the whole desk on. It goes off and, and turns on for me in the morning. And you can see I can just switch all of the different items that are plugged in at the moment. I have the ability to just plug them all in at once. So if I wanted to turn my, my stu studio lights off, I can just turn the lights off. And then if I hit the app again, and it will be blurry, of course. So I turn my studio lights off and I can turn my studio lights on and they just turn those on. And I can do that for the booth studio lights. Let's see, so can I do this here? Booth studio lights, turn them on and it just turns those lights on. And I can turn my booth studio lights off, turns them off. And that just allows me to do, I've really got this, I've tried to optimize the, all of my workflow to just work as well as I can for any kind of coaching scenario that comes up. And this is how it works for me. If you, like I said, if you have any questions about how I do any of this, how any of this stuff is hooked up, don't hesitate to come over to the Booth Junkie Discord, link in the description, of course. Uh, and you can come over and, and ask questions about it. And uh, that's where I hang out. And that's... Uh, or you can ask questions here in the YouTube description, of course. But that's it. I mean, I, I, that's a pretty comprehensive look at the stuff that I use for, uh, for my coaching. I want to say a big thank you to FlexiSpot, again, for sponsoring a portion of this video, for providing me with this desk. Um, full disclosure, they did send it to me. So, uh, But you can see, I'll show you just, I'm just showing you how it works, how it works for me, and some of the, uh, some of the issues that you'll find with it. But that's it. That is how I set up all of my coaching. I hope that helps, and we'll talk to you again next time. Take care. Be well.